Good morning. This is the day that the Lord hath made. It is a beautiful day out there. Amen. Would you stand with us and let's thank him for this day that we've gathered together to worship and to bless his name. Father, I'm so thankful for your grace and your love and how you love me through your son Jesus. And I've come into this house, Lord, this morning to join with others with like precious faith and to worship you and to bless your name and to leave, Lord, continue to worship you and tell others about you. Lord, accept our worship this morning as we bless your name in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you. Let's worship him. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. Opens prison doors, sets the captives free. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. Opens prison doors, sets the captives free. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Spring up, O oh hell, within my soul. Spring up, O oh hell, and make me whole. Spring up, O oh hell.
so hallelujah just praise and worship the king this morning hallelujah i know that if we worship him he has great things in store for us i feel a stirring in the atmosphere something good is gonna happen here god's awesome power is drawing near i feel a stirring in the atmosphere i feel a stirring in the atmosphere something good is gonna happen here god's awesome power is drawing near i feel a stirring in the atmosphere we have come with different needs we have come expecting victory he said his children he would not deny i'm not gonna leave until i'm satisfied i feel a stirring in the atmosphere something good is gonna happen here god's awesome power is drawing near i feel a stirring in the atmosphere i feel a stirring in the atmosphere Something good is gonna happen here. God's awesome power is drawing near. I feel a stirring in the atmosphere. We have come with different needs. We have come expecting victory. He said his children he would not deny. I'm not gonna leave until I'm satisfied. I feel a stirring in the atmosphere. Something good is gonna happen here. God's awesome power is drawing near. I feel a stirring in the atmosphere. I feel a stirring in the atmosphere. Something good is gonna happen here. God's awesome power is drawing near. I feel a stirring in the atmosphere. Shekinah glory is in this place. So strong I can almost see his face. I feel a stirring in this heart of mine. Hallelujah, it's worship time. I feel a stirring in the atmosphere. Something good is gonna happen here. God's awesome power is drawing near. I feel a stirring in the atmosphere. I feel a stirring in the atmosphere. And something good is gonna happen here. God's awesome power is drawing near. I feel a stirring in the atmosphere. I feel a stirring, yes, I feel a stirring. I feel a stirring, yes, I feel a stirring. I feel a stirring, yes, I feel a stirring. I feel a stirring, yes, I feel a stirring. I feel a stirring, yes, I feel a stirring. I feel a stirring, yes, I feel a stirring. I feel a stirring in the atmosphere. It's something good is gonna happen here. God's awesome power is drawing near. I feel a stirring in the atmosphere. Shekinah glory is in this place. So strong I can almost see his face. I feel a stirring in this heart of mine. Hallelujah, it's worship time. I feel a stirring in the atmosphere. Something good is gonna happen here. I thought some power is drawing near. I feel a stirring in the atmosphere. I feel a stirring, yes, I feel a stirring. I feel a stirring, yes, I feel a stirring. I feel a stirring, yes, I feel a stirring. I feel a stirring, yes, I feel a stirring. I feel a stirring, yes, I feel a stirring. I feel a stirring, yes, I feel a stirring. I feel a stirring, yes, I feel a stirring. Well, I feel a stirring in the atmosphere. And something good is gonna happen here. God's awesome power is drawing near. I feel a stirring in the atmosphere. I feel a stirring. 
is going to happen in the house of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Worship the Lord with all your heart and with all your might this morning. Hallelujah. Because he is worthy of it all. Please. 
that I can do is live my life for you. Father, truly that is our heart's cry this morning, Lord, that everything that we do, we do it for you. Father, thank you for giving of your son. Thank you, Lord, for his willingness to go to Calvary. Lord, the price that was paid, the sacrifice that was made, Lord, that we might have life. Lord, and as I look at the things going on around the world, and Lord, I think about the goodness of you. Lord, the very least that I can do is live my life to one and for one that is holy, to live my life for one that is merciful, that has been so merciful and gracious in my life. Lord, allow us, God, to have that inner desire. Lord, to have that attitude that we want to live every part of our life for you simply because of what you have given us this morning. That gift, that gift of salvation, we're thankful for it today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said amen. Amen. We're going to call, call choir in just a moment, but before we do, I've heard rumors that some of you are wanting to know how to get in the choir. I'm getting ready to give you instructions. When we say, all that want to sing in the choir, I'm talking to you. Amen. And uh, anytime we do that, we're opening it up to whosoever will. So if you're here today and you want to help us in the choir, I'm getting ready to call choir. And from this point forward, when we call choir, you come help us. All those that will help us in the choir, come on up at this time and let's sing together for the Lord. Amen. 333, you never know what you'll get in the choir. Amen. Hallelujah. I was expecting a few more of you to be up here. I'm going to call names next time. Amen. Be ready tonight. 333 simply says, I'll fly away. Are you ready to go to heaven this morning? Amen. It would do my soul good if we just sung an old Church of God style this morning. Amen. 333, let's sing it together. Yeah. 
about you? I like that kind of singing, don't you? Gets you ready. I have to rephrase that. You already ought to be ready. Just litten, waiting to hear the call to come. I was a blessing. When that choir singing, when I think about that, I thought my mind come to a time when I was pastoring a church in Coco. He invited everybody up to join this choir. And we had a pretty good choir at the church at Coco that uh, they invited our church, our choir, to sing at the convention. So the uh, first lady, the bishop of the state, lady came over to help us prepare for that great time in the convention. So we all got up there, and she was leading us, and I was a part of that choir. Now, you think I, this didn't happen. This literally happened. She'd stop. She's now, Brother Renfro, this is the key we're singing in. So she said, oh, I said, all right, I'll try again. So we started again. About halfway through the song, she stopped again. And she helped me to how to get on key. And after about the fourth or fifth time, she told me, she said, if you don't mind, if I, if I won't hurt your feelings, she said, just mouth it. <laughs> That's happened. You know what I've done? I stood up there with the choir and just mouthed it in front of that congregation. They didn't know the difference. <laughs> but it's a joy to sing for the Lord, isn't it? Amen. To worship Him. I enjoyed this this morning, this choir singing. But uh, we just thank the Lord and we just... Uh, do we have any first-time guests? First time you've ever been here? All right. Do we have any returning guests? Oh, look at the hands here. Look at here. All of you returning guests here. Yes, before the Lord. We just welcome you here this morning. Uh, if you get your bulletin, look at the uh, events at a glance, the things that are happening. Tonight after uh, the time around the altar that we'll have food and fellowship, Going to be chicken and rice and a good time around breaking bread around the table. Just plan to be with us this evening from that. Then Tuesday, uh, praise team practice and prayer meeting at 7. And uh, women's Bible study, I believe, is, th is that Thursday? Thursday. Uh, Thursday. A lot of things are happening, things that are going on. And let's, you can find something get in. Uh, involved in and uh, and be a part of what God's doing around here so uh, let's plan to be where we need to be on time if possible and just enjoy one another's fellowship and the blessings of the Lord pastor where are you amen do you love the Lord this morning amen let me say before pastor Renfro leaves the platform what a great time we had last night. Amen. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, to all of you, thank you, Pastor. And to all of you that came out, and whether you brought food or you supported or you sang, whatever it was, we had a blast last night. Sing. And uh, I, the scene was wonderful. And, and uh, some said, well, I didn't see you. I heard it. I heard it. I heard it. I popped in, and then I snuck off campus but took you with you in my pocket. Amen. And had you playing as I drove along the road. And so I missed, I think I missed two songs. And uh, I knew a little bit of the lineup, and so I scheduled a few things, but I missed two. But I, I'll go back and hear them, amen. It is going to be up on our website. And uh, so if you didn't get a chance to participate last night and you want to hear it, or if you were here and wanted to see how it really sounded, amen, you can go back to our website and they'll have it there for you. But thank you so much for that. Thank you for the financial seminar. I had a great time Wednesday night, Thursday night, and Friday night. And I'm going to be pastor just for a moment, and some of you that needed to be here wouldn't hear. And we missed you. So we're praying for you, and we've made it available for you to take it home with you. Amen. And so we've worked with Brother Hanks, and uh, they're able to copy those messages Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And uh, I think we even have the PowerPoints that we can print out for you and send home. And they won't be today, but if you're interested in the packet, if you'll let uh, the office staff know, we'll do our very best to get that to you in the coming days. And some good information. Some of it you probably have heard before, but you just forgot, or you need to be reminded, or you need to be refocused. So uh, make sure you take advantage of all 
all of that, and we're just trusting the Lord's going to help you in your personal finances as we collectively become the stewards that God has called us to be. Amen? It's not our money, it's His money, and we want to be a good steward of it. Pastor mentioned the events of this week. Grab your bulletin. And uh, let's do the very best we can there to be involved in all of those things. And I'm just excited about where God's taking us, where He's leading us. And uh, there's a couple things that are coming up. The Valentine's Banquet, you'll start um, hearing more about that. We're looking for a great time there this year. And uh, they've already picked the theme, and I get to know all the details later this week. So when I know the details, then we'll share them, because I don't know all the details yet. Uh, but they're working on that, and looking forward to a great Valentine's Banquet. And the Kid Jam, if your student is in Children's Church and they're interested in going to Kid Jam, um, you really need to let them know today. We need to go and get you signed up to save you some money. And uh, they've been talking about that for a couple weeks in Kid Jam in Children's Church. So if you'll just uh, see Sister Shannon or let the office staff know, we'll do our very best with that. And uh, we're just looking forward to doing all that we can for the kingdom of God. I spent some time this week and, and uh, talked to a few folks and just uh, encouraging them along the way. And this thing's just about over. I believe that. And uh, we need to do all that we can to stay ready, but then help others become ready. Amen? And so that's what hopefully what we're going to try to do as a church is just refocus our efforts and do what we can to help the people that we know become part of the family of God. Amen. Let me say it's good to have Natalie in the main service with us today. She turned 12 this week, so she is no longer an Amplify student. She's moved up to U-Turn, and that's a big step for our students, and I try to make mention of them when they come to the main building on Sunday morning, so we welcome you with all the old folks this morning. Amen. And uh, welcome her to the youth class. They have their time on Sunday morning as I, I think about the folks uh, that have transitioned and and uh, I don't want to start calling names, but our kids are growing up on us, amen? And, uh, and so we need to continue to be a light to them and an example to them in all that we do. I do ask that uh, you remember those that are out sick in prayer today. We've got a few requests that have come already this morning to the office, so I just ask that you be in prayer. If somebody that you know is not here and you don't know why, call them and ask them. It's okay to do that, amen? When I say call, I mean communicate with them whatever way is good for you. Some of you text, some of you message, some of you send smoke signal. Some of you use pigeon mail. Some of you still even write letters. Amen. I get a few of those in the mail. And whatever way is good for you, make contact with them and let them know that you miss them in the house of the Lord this morning. I'm going to ask the ushers to prepare to wait upon you, give you an opportunity to give God what belongs to Him. Amen. His tithes and then our offerings, our love gifts above that. While you're preparing to give this morning, I made mention of this a few weeks ago, but with all of the events we've had happening in the holidays, um, I wanted to mention it again. Some of you have questioned or had questions about our investment program, and uh, if you have any questions on that, please feel free to come see me or talk to me directly, and uh, we'll answer those questions. We do have a couple spots still available in our investment program, currently paying 5%. And so if you have any questions or uh, want some more information on that, call the office or get a hold of me directly, and uh, we'll help you with that. And uh, we're looking forward to what God's going to do there. It's, it's amazing when you sit back and you just look at the last, just the last year and all that God's done. God's been faithful to us. And I never could thank Him enough for what He's done for me. And I say, Lord, if you were faithful in 2014, I know you'll be faithful in 2015. And if Jesus tarries to 2016, he'll be faithful in 2016 then too. Pastor, how do you know that? Are you prophesying? No, I've just read the book. And I'm reminded he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I'm looking forward to seeing what we're going to do as a family of God this year as we continue to refocus and help people realize it's more than just knowing about Jesus. They have to have a relationship, a personal relationship with Jesus. And that's what I'm after this year. Amen? Seeing people born into the kingdom of God. Let's give this morning. It's giving to the Lord. Ushers will serve you from the rear of the building. God bless you as you give.
Father, we thank you for the privilege we've had to give to you this morning. Give you our tithes that belong to you, Lord. Give you our love gifts and our offerings above that. Just pray, God, that you'll bless the gift and the giver this morning. Multiply it for its intended use. Thank you, God, for what you've entrusted into our care. Let us learn through your word and by your spirit how to be the steward that you have called us to be. We will forever be grateful for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. And amen. Thank you again for your giving this morning. Let me uh, talk a little bit about the event on Friday night. Um, some have noticed in our calendar that um, Tommy Bates will be in Plant City on Friday night. Uh, he is going to come down to preach uh, a night or two of our uh, Florida Church of God prayer conferences. And our closest one is in Plant City. It begins at 7 o'clock on Friday night. Some of, I've got a few questions just in passing about uh, are we taking the van or things of that sort. And I've tried to answer it pretty much the same every time. Is yes, we will if there's enough of you that want to go. So if you're interested in going to hear Tommy Bates and be a part of that event on Friday night, if you'll just contact the office the first part of the week and have Rebecca put your name on the list. And if we have enough, we'll load the van up. I don't mind getting it down there. We bought it to use it. Let's use it. Amen. But we need to make sure we have enough to do that. So if you're interested in that, we'll drive down and we'll have church and we'll probably stop and grab something to eat on the way back and come home. So uh, if you have not heard Tommy Bates you'll want to do that and if you have a privilege to do that let's let's do that on uh, on Friday night just before sister Tanya comes to sing I do want to just draw your attention and I don't know what the Sunday school lesson was about this morning I make it a point not to look in, at those where they don't impact what I say or do from this pulpit um, but I did hear the end of it and it appeared brother Roger was talking about the importance of life or the sanctity of life and on this day as we are just a few days January the 22nd would be the 42nd anniversary of that awful decision of Road versus Wade where it made um, it legalized the murder of unborn children. And as I stand in this pulpit today, I want to remind us that we believe that the life that we know is started at conception. And we believe that it is God's decision on when that life ends. Not up to us, regardless of health, regardless of situation, regardless of care. Uh, God is the giver and taker of life. And so you're going to be hearing more about that in the coming days, no doubt, as you're watching the news. And I won't, and we have so many new people that have transitioned into our church and some new Christians and some new families and just new people around the edges. And I don't ever want to take for granted that you are clear on what the Bible says. We believe that God gives life. It is a gift from above and it is no man's, no man's right to take it. And to do so is murder. And so if you want more resources on that, I have a whole email of things that I could send you, five or six messages you could read about it, all kind of good stuff. I'm specifically looking this morning at the Family Research Council information that I printed off before I came to the main building. And it reminds us in Psalms 139 that my substance was not hid from thee. When I was made in secret and, and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, thine eyes, or the Lord's eyes, did see my substance. And I'm glad that he has reminded us through his word that he is the one who gives and takes life. And let us be reminded of that this morning. I'm thankful for not only the first, the first life, being born of flesh, but I'm thankful this morning I've been born a second time. Amen? Born of the Spirit. So let us not forget that. And let's remember those that have erred in their ways, and let's pray for them this week, that somehow through all of this, God will come uh, to meet their need, and they will realize their need for a Savior. And I still believe God forgives. Amen? And we need to do what we can to uphold what is right. So as you hear about that this week... Um, a statistic that kind of caught my attention is the majority of young people ages 18 to 29 uh, self-identify themselves as pro-life. But yet our world or our country has seemed to take in the decision of pro-choice. 83% of Americans endorse significant restrictions on abortion. 34% would restrict abortions only to cases of rape or incest or to save the life of the mother. And 10% of the general public believe that abortion should be illegal. Only 10% of the general population believe, according to this study, that abortion should be illegal in all circumstances. Church, there's something wrong with that figure. 
It's not our decision to decide when life begins or life ends. And I ask as we pray this week, let's remember our nation in prayer. And let's be thankful for the life that God has given to each and every one of us this morning. Can you say amen for that? Amen. Worship with Sir Tanya. She comes and sings just before the word this morning. A country where no twilight shadows deepen. Unending day where night shall never be. A city where no storm clouds ever gather. Now this is just what heaven means to me. What will it be when we get over yonder and join the throng upon the glassy sea? To greet our loved ones and crown Christ forever. No, this is just what heaven means to me. And when at last we see the face of Jesus, before whose image other lives all flee. And when they crown him Lord of Lords, I'll be there. Now this is just what heaven means to me. What will it be when we get over yonder and join the throng upon the glassy sea to greet our loved ones and crown Christ forever? Oh, this is just what heaven means to me. A place where there is no misunderstanding. And from all enmity and strife we're free. There's no unkind words, the heart, the heart are spoken. And now this is just what heaven means to me. And what will it be when we get over yonder? And join the throng upon the glassy sea. We're going to greet our loved ones and crown Christ forever. And oh, this is just what heaven means to me. What will it be when we get over yonder and join the throng upon the glassy sea? We're going to greet our loved ones and crown Christ forever. Oh, this is just what heaven means.
means to me. Yes, this is just what heaven means to me. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is good all the time. Amen. And all the time, God is good. And Shambach used to tell you years ago, you don't have any problems. All you need is faith in God. Amen. I'm going to preach to you today, and I'm going to tell you some hard stuff. Before we get to that, I want to tell you there's nothing impossible for God. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above anything that we ask or think according to the power of God that worketh in us. I want you to know today that God told Moses, is there anything too hard for me? He told Abraham, is my hand waxed short that it cannot move? I'm going to be telling you some hard things today. But before we get into these things, I wanted to preface it with you to know that there's nothing impossible for God. Things are impossible for man, but it's not impossible for God. We've been looking at this year and focuses on faith, family, fellowship, and finances today. We want to continue with that ideal today. Pastor has been talking to us about first fruits and how it's important that you pay your tithes. When you get paid, the first thing you need to do is take Take 10% out and pay it to God. Then you need to take more than that out uh, and begin to give your offerings. I want you to know, the uh, Bible says, Prove me and see if I not will open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings upon you that you cannot contain. That's for paying your tithes. Then it said, Give and it shall be given to you. Pressed down, shaken together, men shall give unto your bosom. That's paying your offerings. Given to people you see in need. We looked at this a couple Wednesday nights ago when I preached. I told you that we need to give to needs and give to things and give. In your bulletin you see that we need to pay tithes. But also there's an opportunity for you to give for seed for souls to help. If everyone in this house would pay tithes and give seed for souls... The church would not have any debts. The church wouldn't have any problems. We wouldn't have to go into, into the red we, every year. But the Lord would supply your needs. And if you're not paying your tithes, I challenge you this year to pay tithes. But I'm challenging you more than that. I'm challenging you to give $5 a week extra for seed for souls. And I promise you, next year, God, this year, God's going to bless you exceedingly, abundantly, above what you asked or think. According to God's will. Why? Because it's God's word. But uh, the Lord's been speaking in my heart this week. And the Lord just speaks to you. Uh, and I allow Him to speak to me. He spoke to me about some hard things. Hard things. And what I mean hard thing. The scripture tells us there's some hard things for us not to do. I want you to catch that. But I want to tell you today, with God all things are possible. Let us open with a word of prayer and start off with prayer today. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to come before your house again, before your presence again. We thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit that's in this house today. We thank you for the song service and the special music and, and the offering that we've given to you already. And Lord, we pray today that you'd bless it, that you'd honor it, that you would sanctify it. Anoint your word today, the message that you put into my heart and my life today. I pray that you let it to go forth and let it to come out in Jesus' name. Amen. In our hearts and our lives, we don't understand everything that God does for us. There's situations in our life we don't understand. Me and Christy, as we was talking to you uh, this year, that we were uh, uh, talking about a Grace Worship Center and said we can't continue to go on the way we can. And we was worried about what was God going to do? What was we going to do? Where was we going to go? Because I would need a job. I would need to eat and come. But you know what? God supplied the need. We closed Grace Worship Center the next Sunday. We started off here at Okoy Church of God as associate pastor. And then after associate pastor of, of, of Okoy Church of God, an opening came up at Light Christian Academy to work with the high school students. The Lord provided that. 
I want you to know if you don't, may not understand things that happen in your heart, in your life. But if you trust God, you believe in God, you pay tithes and you give offerings and you do the best that you can for God, you may not understand everything that goes on in your heart, in your life. But I promise God will take care of you. I want to thank you again for the three months. It's been going on our fourth month here at Grace Worship Center. I thank you for the way that you opened your doors and opened your hearts to me and Christy, but also to the people of Grace Worship Center. You've loved on them. When they're not here, you send them letters, and you let them know that we miss them, and we appreciate that today. I wanted to have some some of Grace Worship Center testify today and share a little bit about their heart today, but uh, time allowing, I think we're going to skip that and maybe we'll do it another time. I know a lot of you haven't been able to uh, meet the people from Grace Worship Center, so I'm going to just go through and kind of tell them, each one of them, who they are. This is my, Christie's parents, my father and mother-in-law, father, father-in-law and mother-in-law, Doug and Barbara Harris. That's Christie's parents. Beside him, her is Sister Shirley. She's been going to our church for about six years. Mom and Dad's been coming to our church for about ten years. Dad and Robin, that's my dad and my brother Robin, they've been coming for 20 years since we started the church. Actually, we started Grace Worship Center in 1988 when I got out of hospital, not out of the hospital, got out of college. And we started it at my dad and mom's house, and that was in 1988. So actually, Grace Worship Center is older than 20 years if you consider the time that we was at, uh, at the uh, uh, by a house study. Uh, behind Robin is Lila Skipper. She's my aunt. She's been with us since 1988. She paid her tithes to Grace Worship Center in 1988 and began that. So she's been there ever since the beginning. All the way back in the back is Sister Lot on the left. She started coming uh, 20 years ago. We started in February. She started coming on Easter. And her and her husband was faithful. Her husband passed away several years ago. But they have been faithful to God's work and God's plan. A story I want to tell about her. She was out. Her and her husband was out on an airboat. And they was out on that airboat. And the airboat tipped over. This was on a Sunday. They was out on the tip rover, and the Lord, she tried out to God, God, if you get me out of here, I'll start coming to church. And, and she had her driver's license and her efficient license in her pocket, and she was in water over her head. She got to the banks, and the, the water, uh, her fishing license, her driver's license was not even wet. The next Sunday, she was at church, and she'd been at church every Sunday since then, 20 years ago. That happened 20 years ago. That's a true story. It happened. She made a promise. She stuck to it. The next, she came with her mama. The next Sunday, her, her, her husband told her, if you're going to church, I'm going to church with her. So her husband started coming the next Sunday, and they've been faithful. Beside her is my Aunt Sarah. She's been a part of Grace Worship Center ever since we started, and she's been faithful, and we love you, and we appreciate you. I wanted you to know kind of who every one of them are so you would know, and had no chance, but... I thank Grace Worship Center for the 20 years that you gave me, and I thank you for coming over here with us now for four months. Appreciate you for your faithfulness and your support, and we love you and appreciate you and love you more than you'll ever know. But we also love you people here at Okoy Church of God for allowing us to become a part. Let us go into God's words. In Sunday school, we talked a little bit. I went... I didn't even look at Sunday school this week because I don't like when I'm preaching to see what's going on, but I try to focus on God. And, and he was talking. I had two points but uh, that I wanted to present to you today, but uh, as he was talking about sanctity of life and that in, in, in the Old Testament, if they killed someone by accident, they could go to a refuge city that God had made for them. And as long as they was in that refuge city, they were safe. But the minute they came out of that refuge, the, the family members could kill them for revenge for taking up someone's life. So as long as they was in the refuge center. I want you to know today, uh, uh, the first thing that I want to tell you today that's hard for us to do is get to heaven. It's hard for you because the Bible says the wages of our sin is death. And the thing that you must learn in your heart today, in your own works, in your own righteousness, in everything that you do, you cannot do anything to deserve heaven. Because the wages of your sin is death. You are a sinner. 
we are all sinners saved by grace but when you accept Jesus Christ in your heart and your life and you accept Jesus Christ the cross of Calvary the cross of Calvary becomes your refuge center and because, remember when Noah built the ark he built the ark and all of those that was in the ark was saved from the blood Jesus Christ the cross of Calvary is our Noah's ark is our ark of safety as long as we accept Jesus Christ in our heart and our life uh, and we trust in him and believe in the cross of Calvary we have safety and then we can get into heaven but I want you to understand if you walk away from that ark of safety we Pentecostals believe in something called backsliding if you walk away from God's safety, if you walk away from the cross of Calvary, you're no longer in God's saving grace, but you're in, under the thing that says the wages of your sin is death. I just wanted to throw that into you real quick about salvation. What do you deserve? You deserve death, hell, and punishment. We've been looking in Sunday school the last several weeks about God's grace. Aren't you glad for God's grace and God's mercy? The next thing that I want to tell you, it's hard for us to do. The Bible tells us that the tongue is the most unruly member of the body. That we cannot control our tongue. You know, if you cannot control your tongue, you cannot get to heaven. If you backbite, if you gossip, if you do all of these things... James 1, 26 says, If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from this world. To keep ourselves unspotted. Let's go to the book of James, if we may. James, chapter 3. James, chapter 3. I read this scripture to you in James, chapter 1, that prefaced us about the tongue. But let's go into the, uh, uh, James, chapter 3, and he tells us a little more. I'm going to read that to you in verse 26 again of chapter 1. If any man of you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. James chapter 3. Begin with verse 1. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that what we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and is also able to bridle the whole body. If you're able to bridle your tongue, you're able to bridle your whole body. About, it says here that the most, if we uh, bridle the whole body, behold, we put a bits into the horse's mouth that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Sister Rebecca could tell us all about horses. Behold, also the ships which brought they to be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small hand, whithersoever the governor lifts us. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a bitter, a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a word of iniquity. So is the tongue, or tongue among our members, that it devileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the curse of nature, and it is set on fire of hell for every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and have been tamed of mankind but the can't, tongue can no man contain it is an unruly evil full of deadly poison did you hear that no man can tame 
Remember what I prefaced this service with? All things is possible with God. Man cannot control their tongue, but God can. That's how come when God fills you with the Holy Spirit, what does He take control of? He takes control of the most unreally member of your body. If God can get control of the tongue and fill you with the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in tongues, then He control your whole body. You yourself cannot control your tongue. The Bible says in Proverbs that death and life are in the power of your tongue. My mom used to tell me when we was growing up, Rick, if you can't say anything good, don't say anything at all. If you can't say anything positive, don't say anything at all. If you can't say anything righteous, don't say anything at all. In our hearts and our lives, we must, as Christians... That's how the world knows the difference between a religious person and a non-religious person. Now you must understand that Christianity is not really a religion. Christianity is a relationship. But I'm grouping that into this to show you the difference between all the other religions and Christianity. Christianity gets a hold of your most unruly member your tongue and takes control of it and then your language is completely different that's come when you see someone that's a Christian God desires pure thoughts pure words pure things coming on our life I want you to know one thing it's impossible for you to control it But if you give your tongue to God, just like you give your life to God, it's impossible for you to be saved in your own works and your own righteousness, but you turn your life and your heart over to the Lord Jesus Christ and you accept what He's done for you on the cross of Calvary, you can be saved. God's grace and get to heaven. Our tongue is the most unruly member of our body, but if we uh, don't turn our tongue over to God, Let the Holy Spirit take control of our tongue. That's how come when He wants to baptize you in the Holy Ghost, He fills you with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. If God can control your tongue, the world will see that your religion is not in vain. Impossible. It's impossible. But with God, all things are impossible. The next thing that the scripture tells us is an impossibility is very important. Let let me go ahead and finish reading the scriptures here. In verse 9, Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of man, of God. And out of the same mouth proceedeth blessings and cursings. My brethren, these things ought not to be so doth a fountain send forth at the same bitter place sweet water and bitter? Can the tree fig, my brethren, bear olive tree berries, oh, either a vine figs? So can no fountain both hold yet salt water and fresh? Who is wise and a dude with knowledge among you? Let him share out of a good conversation. His works with wisdom and meekness. If you have bitter envy and a strife in your heart, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is eathly, sensual, and devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is fierce, pure, then peaceably, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good friends, without partiality and without hypocrisy. If we can let our tongue speak these things, then our religion is not in vain. The fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them 
that make peace. It's impossible for man to control his tongue. But with God, all things is possible. I want you to know today, you cannot do this on your own. You cannot control your tongue because your tongue automatically wants to gossip. It automatically wants to say negative things about people. It always wants to repeat what it hears. But we as Christians, we must put a control of our tongue. And if we can let God control our tongue, He can control every everything else in your heart. We're supposed to live a whole, holy life set apart to God. If you can set apart your tongue to God, God, you can easily put apart everything else to God. Give to God. Give to God. Give to God. Let's go now to 1 Timothy. First Timothy 1 Timothy 1.5 now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of good conscience and faith unfeigned. The commandment is charity. Remember when we spoke to you a couple Wednesday nights ago, we talked to you about the fruit of the Spirit and how that God told Adam and Eve not to partake of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And when he did, he brought sin and death and judgment. And I presented to you that day that God put it in my heart and in life that if we partake of the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is love. All the others are aspects of love. If we partake in love, then out of love we talk to you, you can give and it shall be given unto you. You can give to others and give. You can give to others and give. Now let's go to 1 Timothy 6. 1 Timothy 6. Verse number 3. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and not to the doctrine, and which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing but doting about questions and strifes of words whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil, surmising. Perverse disputings of men, corrupt minds, destitute of truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such draw thyself away from. But godliness with contentment is great gain. What did Bishop Hanks teach us this week in the financial seminar? God's will for your life is not to have any debt, right? Not to have any debt at all. But godliness with contentment is great. And we need to be content. And not always wanting, but we need to be content. For we brought nothing into this world. It is certain we can carry nothing out. We came into this world naked. We leave this world naked. We carry, there's nothing into, we carry it out. Having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. Do you have food? Do you have clothes? Do you have a place to live? Then be content with what you have. But they which fell into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition, Look at number 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. What Paul is talking about here is some were believers, walked in this face, and they got the love of money, and they coveted after it, and they walked away from the faith. They backslid. And pierced himself through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things. Flee the love of money. Flee being covetousness after everything. Flee these things and follow what? Righteousness. Godliness. But what did those definition for godliness was? Godliness with contentment 
is great gain. So, if we follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and have professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of God who quitteneth all things and before Christ Jesus who before Pontius by witness a good confession that thou keep this commandment without spot unrebukable until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ which in his times he shall show who is blessed and only potent, potent the king of kings and lord of all who hath only or mortality dwelling in the light which no man can approach us, whom no man hath seen nor can see to be honor and power everlasting amen charge them that are rich in this world listen to me I'm going to give you the charge that Paul gave to Timothy charge them that are rich in this world do not be high minded I want you to understand there's nothing wrong with being rich. There's nothing wrong with being money. As long as you don't let the love of money control you. If you let the love of control you, then you're in trouble. He tells them, Paul's telling Timothy, uh, do this. He said, charge them who are rich in this world that they be not high. Do not be prideful. A lot of times when you get money and you get rich, you get prideful and think you're better than everybody else. Do not let this happen to you, but you stay low-minded. Nor trust in uncertain riches. Don't trust in that money. I had some stock that I bought. When dixie stocked. I worked at Win dixie before I, we started the church between and we actually got the building and all I worked there for about four years and I bought some stock so when I left I still had the stock and I had 50 I bought 50 shares and then it, it split and so I had a hundred shares so I said I'm gonna save that for my uh, retirement I kept it you know what happened several years ago when Dixie went <laughs> when Dixie stock went <laughs> I still got them two papers at home that says I got 100 shares. But you know what? It's not worth a hill of beans. It's not worth the paper it's wrote on. It's not worth the pen writing on it. It is nothing. You know what? If that was my trust, if that's what I was confiding in, it would go under. Today, what I'm trying to tell you is that don't let money control you. You control your money. Just like with your tongue. Don't let the tongue control you. You control your tongue. In our hearts and our life, these things are hard for us to do. Don't let your works of righteousness be your salvation. But let your works follow your salvation, your belief. It's impossible for man to be saved only by Jesus Christ. It's impossible for man to control his tongue, but you can control your tan if you surrender it over to God and let the Holy Spirit fill it in your heart. And I want to give you a parable, give you a story that Jesus Christ gave about the tongue, about giving. Listen to this. We'll be going there, but let me finish reading this. Uh, uh, but in, that they be not high men nor trust in uncertainty, but trust in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. That they do good, and they be rich in good works. So God, what God is trying to tell us, there's nothing wrong with being rich. As long as you don't let the money control you, you control the money. Be rich in good works. Use that money that God gives you for good things to help people to do things and use it ready to distribute willing to communicate remember the last day the pastor told us the three things that our, our money was supposed to do number one you're supposed to take care of your family number two it was supposed to take care of the poor and number three it was supposed to take care of God's work if we remember that, well, that's what he's saying. Don't be controlled by the money, but let the money, that you're rich in good works, 
be ready to distribute it. Be ready to communicate. Laying up store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they might be hold of eternal life. My dad taught me one thing when we was growing up is that to pay your tithe. And when we used to work, I used to work mowing, I used to mow my grandparents' yard and i get paid. I would pay tithes. And he instilled that into me. My Winn-Dixie stock is not worth anything. But I've been paying tithes since I was 12 years old. You know what I got laid up for me in heaven? Maybe you hadn't paid tithes. Start paying tithes today. Start paying your offerings today. And get things laid up to you in heaven. Not things of this world, but things to come. Let's go to our last verse. It's in Luke. It's in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Luke 18, it's in Matthew 19, it's in Luke Mark 10, then it's in Luke 18. So I want to go to Luke 18 and read it for you. Listen to this story. Our scripture this month for the for Light Christian Academy is the only way, uh, how do you be born again? It's talking about the rich man, and the rich man came to them by night. Why? Because he didn't want to be seen but this story I'm going to tell you about now is about another rich man a rich ruler and listen to him Luke Luke chapter 18 verse number 18 and a certain ruler Luke 18 verse 18 and a certain ruler asked him saying good master what shall I do to inherit eternal life And Jesus said unto me, Why callest thou me good? There is none is good, save one that is good. Who's saying this? Jesus. Jesus said there is none good except for God. If Jesus said there is none good, how do we expect our good works to get us into heaven? It won't. The only one that is good is good is God. Thou knowest the commandments, do not kill, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, honor thy mother and thy father. And he said, all of these things I have done since my youth. Okay, you think you so righteous. That's what one of, the, one of them said, Matthew remarked, says, you think you're so righteous? Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing. Sell all that you have. Distribute it unto the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. When he heard this, he was very sorrowful. For he was very, very rich. Matthew or Mark 1 says that He came running to Jesus and knelt down to him. It was during that day. The other ruler we was talking about that came wanted to know about how to be born again, he came at night because he didn't want to be seen. But this rich young ruler was not, he didn't care about being seen. He wanted to know. So he came running, he bowed down. Jesus just just told him that unless you be like one of these little children you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven they were bringing children to Jesus to, uh, to bless and pray for and the disciples got mad about it Jesus said hey hey don't do that he put him on his arm on his knees and uh, spent time with him and he said unless you enter into the uh, you, uh, unless you come as one of these children you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven so as he's leaving, this rich man ruler comes running up to him, kneels down to him, and says, well, how what us do to enter the kingdom of heaven? He just told him, come as like one of these children. You know what? Children don't worry about anything. They don't care about anything. That's why we must be in God's kingdom. We must not care. 
must not have any worries of what you do. They let give it to their parents, and their parents worry at all. Our Heavenly Father is God. He said, we can pray, Abba, Father. What does He want you to do? Come as a little child. Don't worry about your salvation. Come unto me, and you shall have rest. Don't worry about your tongue. You cannot control your tongue. But if you come unto me, I will control your tongue. And then you shall enter and into the kingdom of heaven. About your finances. Don't worry about your finances. He says, you, what must I do to inherit the kin of life? I've done all of these things. I've kept the Ten Commandments. I don't kill. I don't steal. I don't commit adultery. I don't do any of these things. I honor my father. I've done all of these things. He says, young man, you lack one thing. Sell all your money. Sell what you have. Distribute unto the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come follow me. When he heard this, he left sorrowful. For he was very, very rich. There's nothing wrong with being rich. As long don't, as you don't let the money control you, you control the money. He didn't want to let go of his money. So what did he do? He turned around and walked away. Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful and he said, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? If you have money, it's hard for you to enter into the kingdom of God. If you have a tongue, it's hard for you to enter into the kingdom of God. If you have good works, if you have sin in your life, it's hard for you to enter into the kingdom of God. But listen to what he says after this. I'm going to skip 25 right now. The disciples said unto him, when they heard this, who can be saved? He said, the things which are impossible with God, with man, are possible with God. Verse 24, now how hardly shall they that have riches into the kingdom of God. For it is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye. Do you know what a needle's eye is? I looked this up to find out for sure what they was talking about. I thought I knew. You ever tried threading a needle? That's what you call the needle's eye. And I've got to where I can't even see the little bitty eye. So there's no way I could even thread it. But even when I could thread, see it, I couldn't thread it. It's almost impossible. And can you imagine a camel going through a needle's eye? In these times, they used camels quite a bit. And what they used camels for was to, to tote their belongings and tote it. And as they do these things... They would come to certain places and the camels would have to get on their hands and knees to go through these little passageways. They had to get on their high knees and go down and go through these little things. It's impossible sometimes. But you know what? For it is easy for a camel to go through a needle's eye. What does a camel represent? Camel represents our loads and our care. It's hard for you if you're trusted in your riches, you trusted in your works, you trusted in good things, you trusted in all of these things. As hard as it is for that camel to go through that needle's eye, it's impossible for you. If you're trusted in the, your goodness, you're trusted in your heavy load, if you're trusted in all of these things that the camel was used for, you cannot enter into it. How hardly shall they have riches enter into the kingdom of God. But with God, you can. For with God, you can. Remember the scripture I read to you in 1 Timothy at the end of it? Charge them that are rich in this world. Be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth richly all things to enjoy. Realize these things. Without God, it's impossible for you to be a Christian. Without God, 
It's impossible for you to control your tongue. Without God, it's impossible for you to control your money. But what God desires to do is to use your old sinful man to turn it around. And when you accept Jesus Christ into your heart and life, who does he want to use? You that is sinful. You that is lost. You that is trusted on your way to hell. For the wages of your sin is death. But what? Jesus came that you have, might have life and have it more abundant. So when God gets a hold of your heart, what does he want to control? He wants to use you in a great and a mighty way. He wants to take control of your tongue so that you are not speaking like the things of the world, not backbiting, not gossiping, and not doing all of these things. But you're using God, using your tongue to proclaim blessings and not cursing. To proclaim blessings. And then God wants to use your... How do you tell someone about the Lord Jesus Christ? Your tongue. With your life. Living an example. You give your, your works of righteousness, you turn it over to God, and you give your, your heart and your life to Him. Be an example to those that are around you. Use your tongue to testify of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let them to see a difference in you. And God wants to take that money that you have, money that God given you, God gave you the job, God gave you the help, God gave you these things that you can, uh, you can work what does he want to do? He wants to take that money that you have and he wants you to use it for the kingdom of God. Paying tithes, giving offerings, helping those in need, doing what you can, what is right. Let me read it to you again. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who give us as richly all things to enjoy. God gave you all this to enjoy as long as you do it in the right attitude, giving it all to God. God can save you. God can fill you with the Holy Spirit. And God can make your money and use it for His glory, for His honor, and for His kingdom. Amen. God is good. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Sister Wendy, come to the piano. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. If you're here today, you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You've not accepted Him. You're still trusted in your work, still trusted in your righteousness. Won't you come to the ark of safety? If you're still having problems with your tongue today, won't you turn your tongue over to the Lord? It's impossible. But with God, all things are impossible. That you would use your tongue for edification and, uh, and telling people about the Lord Jesus Christ and doing good things. And that you would take your money and you would not be controlled by your money. You would not be wrapped up in getting money, getting money, getting money. But the money that you have, you would take it and you give it to God. And let God use it. And let God bless it. And let God multiply it. And let God bless you. Every head bowed. Every eye closed today. What I want you to know today. These things are impossible. For man. There's no way that we can get into salvation because we don't deserve it. The only thing we deserve is death, hell, punishment. The wages of our sin is death. But Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Have it more abundantly. Have it more abundantly. Have it more abundantly. In the name of Jesus, we praise you today. I pray for every individual that's in this house today. I pray that there be one that does not know you. I pray today that you would get a hold of their heart and get a hold of their life. If there be one in here today that does not turn their tongue completely over to you today. 
I pray today that you'd baptize them in the Holy Ghost and fire. I pray that you can take control of their tongue and that you would use them and edify them today. And I pray for all of those today that you've given us money, that we have a place to live and we got food over our uh, food to eat and clothes on our back. I pray today that you'd let us learn how to control our money and let not our money control us. It's only by the grace of God, the anointing of God. Hallelujah. God bless you. Everybody stand. I want you to know one thing. With God, it's with man, it's impossible. But it's God, it's impossible. God wants to take your life. God wants to take your, your tongue. And God wants to take your money and use it for the kingdom of heaven. God bless you. Tonight's service is at 6 o'clock. We have prayer at 530 so we'd love to he have each and every one of you here today. Pastor, you have anything else to say? Amen. Go with one thing I used to say at my church all the time, and I want to tell you today. Go with God, and I can guarantee you that he'll go with you. God bless you. We love you. Turn around, love one another, and we'll see you tonight.